good evening. I said good evening, y'all. Good, good evening. evening. There you go. Hi, hey. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. So good to see all your smiling faces. Uh, before we get started, we're going to have a very brief word of prayer. Uh, and then we'll get going. Please join me. Gracious and heavenly God, our Father, God, we thank you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you for this daytime and opportunity that you've given us once again to come into your house, to gather in your name, Father, that we might worship you, worship you through your word. We pray, O oh, Father, that you would continue to reveal your truth to us that is found on the pages of the Holy Writ. Help us, God, to uncover, discover, and rediscover who you are and who we are, God. Father, we pray that you would uh, speak to our hearts and our minds. God, that we would be edified and you would be you would be glorified. We pray, Father, for those that are on their way. We ask that you grant them travel and mercy. We pray, Father, for those that are joining us online. We pray, God, for those that had the heart to join, but Father, were unable to, or are unable to at this point. God, you get all the glory, honor, and praise, because you would be the one worthy of it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How's everybody enjoying this evening? Good. So, we are, kids are going upset, yes ma'am, yep, we are going to jump right in to our text tonight, so that should be familiar to you, because it is the same text from Sunday. And I made it big so you can see it. Second Timothy, chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 14, we'll, we'll work our way all the way down to 17, but we're going to start off dealing with these two here. It says, but as for you, Paul is talking to Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. I just want to back up for a quick second and say that, you know, Sunday's sermon, the title was Live, Live in Contrast, right? And so that's where we're going to continue our conversation and foundation is, is, is that contrast. Uh, because... That's where we want to be. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's writing the second letter to Timothy, and he's emphasizing, I want to suggest, the idea of remaining in contrast. Right? Sometimes we start off right in the right spot. We start off on the right space. And then, for some reason or another, you know, circumstances, situations, we then uh, disrupt that contract. And now the image becomes muddled. The image that we are displaying or trying to portray, uh, you can't see it as clear, even with your glasses, <laughs> right? You can't see it as good because we're, we're not in contrast anymore, right? So, before Paul got here to, but as for you, he said, you know all about my life. You know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance, my persecutions, and my suffering. He's offering himself as a testimony for Timothy to sort of uh, draw from, right? You. It, it's, it's, it's giving evidence to support his argument. Um, think about it like this. When you have a point that you are trying to make, oftentimes we use ourselves or our experiences to support whatever message we're promoting, right? We tell our children, uh, believe me, you don't want to do this, right? Or we tell someone else, now maybe not even our children, our family member, our coworkers, our friends, Believe me, you don't want to do this because I did that and this is how it worked out. Or, trust me, you want to try this because this was the benefit for me. 
And so Paul is doing that very thing here prior to him getting in this piece of the text. Saying, look, remember about all of the stuff I've been through. I've been writing to you. Matter of fact, you've been with me and seen these things. So he was eyewitness to Paul's ministry, right? He said, when I was there, what happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. So he's giving credit to who? The Lord. Not himself, not, not anything other than God. He said, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Right? So that's during the time where, again, both physical persecution as well as verbal persecution and other forms of perse economic persecution, social persecution, all of those things were happening at that time. And then he says, while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Why is he saying that? He's saying that because he's talking about, if you look at the, the very first line of this, this chapter, he says, in the last days. So it's not like bad people will change their mind. It's not like bad people will start being good. Right? Their disposition is not going to change. He said their deception will become even greater. Right? And, 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 and they will become worse. So there are just some folks that won't ever change. As much, yeah, people will be pe people will people. As much as we want them to change, as much as we pray for them, there are just some folks that won't ever change their mind. That won't ever accept Christ as Savior. That won't ever allow the Holy Spirit to regenerate their heart and their mind. There are just some people out there that will maintain that moniker of deception. Why? Because they bought into the lie of the enemy. They have aligned themselves with the chief deceiver. All right? So then he gets here, and he says, But as for you, Timothy, but as for you, say your name. Say, as for me. There you go. See, somebody's listening. <laughs> As for you, my brother and sister, continue on what you have learned and have become convinced of. Mm -hmm. See, Timothy was trained in righteousness, right? He knew the word of God. He had a Jewish mother and a Greek or Gentile father. And he knew, uh, he learned about Jesus through the Holy Scriptures and the testimony of trusted individuals. That's key, y'all. The testimony of trusted individuals. You can't believe everybody's testimony. Right? You got to be careful to pay attention, to listen to the testimony. Because if the testimony doesn't point to God, something's off. Amen. If it's all about me, Amen. I, myself, you know, what I did, and you, you shift focus from the Lord. Because remember, Paul said that it was God who did it, right? He said God was the one that rescued him from all of that stuff. If you got people out here claiming it's my money, it's my education, mm. it's my good looks, it's my networking. No, nah, you know, I, the reason I got the promotion was because I had did a solid for that other person and then they had talked to this person and that person, you know, got my resume and, and, and everything worked out. That may be true, but God did all of that Amen. stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when we omit God from the testimony, mm -hmm. We're now telling a lie. We're now in that mode of deception. So he knew the Holy Scriptures and the testimony of trusted individuals. His mother taught him, right? His grandmother taught him, and Paul taught him. Right? So he grew up knowing about the word of the Lord. Now, not all of us started off in church. That, you know, that not all of us grew up in the Word, but at some point, someone introduced it to us. Someone shared the message of truth, the message of hope, right? And, and God used people to water, and, 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 and He provided the increase, right? 
he, he provided people to come along and cultivate that which was planted inside of you. Right? And so Timothy would have understood that the life of a Christian, the life of a disciple of the Lord Jesus the Christ, was to be different. It wasn't to look like others. It wasn't to look like the world. It wasn't to look the same. It was to be in contrast to that of other belief systems. Because they're living in the Greco-Roman world. And remember, in the Greco-Roman world, what's going on? Idolatry. Idolatry, Idolatry right? They have the Greek gods and the Roman gods. They have all of these things. They are assigning uh, divinity to objects. Like this thing right here. Look, it's got a laser, I think. Yeah. So they would assign divinity to the laser god or the camera god or whatever. You know, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, everything, fertility, everything that you could think of had a, a god or goddess assigned to it. And so Paul's saying we're to live in contrast to that, but also we're to live in tr contrast to the false teachers. Mm -hmm. We're to live in contrast to the ones that have crept in among us and started to mess up and manipulate, right, the word of God, to adulterate the word of God for their own benefit, right? We're to be staying apart from them as well because we are the ones, right? We're going to be the remnant. We're going to be the ones that stay true. We're going to be Timothy. You're going to be that, that preacher. You're going to be that pastor that leads people towards heaven and not towards hell. You're going to lead people into righteousness because the word of God is at your disposal. But first and foremost, you got to know the word of God. Right? If you got a tool and don't know how to use it, it's pointless in your hand. Right? So the word of God helps in that, that work, in that effort. Timothy also knew that faith alone in Christ alone was distinctive from the false teaching being promulgated. Right? And so Paul remarked to Timothy that during the last days, there would be trust. There would be a lot of trouble. I mean, we've been living in the last days really since the Bible because back then, they were thinking the same thing we've been talking about for I don't know how many years. I, I mean, I was a little boy in church and they were talking about the last days too, right then. They were talking about it then, and that was in the 80s. You know, 40 some years ago. So Timothy understood, and Paul reminded them that the Holy Scriptures have the power to lead to salvation. Now, why would the Holy Scriptures have the power to lead to salvation? That's a, that's a question you can answer. Yes, sir. Um, the only way um, that, that we have a hope of salvation is through the word that tells us that it's through Christ. And so the Holy Scriptures tell us that. And that's, that's where the power comes from. Yes. Salvation is holy of grace through faith alone and Christ alone. And Christ is presented as the central figure of salvation. He is the bridge of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. He is the redeemer of humanity. He is the risen Savior, and He is the returning Lord and King. I don't know what that B is. I might have just missed it. <laughs> but this is what's contained in the Word, and that's why it has the power to lead to salvation. Because it itself, is, it, it has the, the, the content, the, the character, the one who is salvation, which is Christ. And so... We have this great tool, this great resource at our disposal, but we got to know it. We got to look at it. We can't just keep it on the shelf. Um, you know, Mary used to say, especially during dedications, I say it now too, like, you get that brand new, white, shiny Bible, right? It should be crumpled up after a couple years. It should have some torn edges. It should have some marks in there. There should be some highlighter there. There should be evidence of usage and not just a nice thing that's on your shelf when folk come over they can say, oh look, they got the Bible there. <laughs> it needs to be 
used. It needs to be worn. We wear the word of God on our hearts, right? And in our minds. So he's saying, look, this is key in your fight against what you're facing. And saints of God, that's our key in protecting his word and guarding our witness. In our fight against the enemy, against his daily attack, we need to know the Holy Scriptures. And when we know the Holy Scriptures, we can use the Holy Scriptures to help lead others out of darkness. Now again, we don't save them, Okay? I'm not in the business, we're not in the business of, per se, saving souls. Christ is. We are just agents, representatives of Christ, that offer that information to others. And Christ does the saving. None of us died on the cross. None of us bled. None of us wore a crown of thorn. None of us was buried in a borrowed tomb. And certainly none of us was resurrected. Although some of us might want to say that. Uh, those of us that have experienced a, a night of uh, intoxication. <laughs> and then the next day he woke up like, praise God, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, we wasn't always saying that. <laughs> But it is, it, is, it is him, right? He does the work. He does the work through us. The word does the work. I say that often, and I, and I, and I believe it. the word does the work. And the word in us and can be through us to others to do that, that very work. Amen? Amen. I like when in John 15, when he talks about, um, Jesus says about how um, the last part after he talks about the vine and the everything. Then he talks about how um, we like to think that we were so, um, you know, so intelligent and so smart that we chose him. Mm -hmm. But in reality, he chose us. Right. We weren't smart enough to do that. The Holy Spirit in us helped us to choose, yeah. right? We made the decision. But it was, there's always influence. Every decision that we make is influenced by something. Mm -hmm. I, I, I often tell you all that I am like, like uh, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so you know, billboards get me all the time. If I see something, quick check. Immediately, <laughs> I'm thinking, man. You know, I get a couple so miles down the road, I'm thinking, hmm, might, might have to go to quick check. Or <laughs> something about, you know, like getting your, getting your you know, car fixed. I start thinking, man, there's something wrong with it. it you know, it, 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 it initiates the thought process, and then we start to, I start to, I'll use myself as an example. I'll start to go down that checklist of making the decision. So something is influencing and impacting my choice to either go do this thing or not do this thing. Rock is a scholar. There's a game, 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 there's a game on the line. That's the first one. That's the first one. So there's, there's something that influences us, right? We do end up, we're the ones that make the decision, but there's always an influence. There's always something out there that's pushing you to make to, to move one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting tonight, Saints, is what I suggested Sunday, and what I will continue to suggest this year is that we allow the Holy Spirit, right, God's Word inside of us to help us navigate our journey to help us navigate every day that God grants us on this earth, right? I'm not saying that, that we're going to be perfect. I'm not saying that there are times where we'll fall or we'll choose ourselves over God because that's just part of our DNA, right? I don't always want to be nice. <laughs> Believe me, when I'm driving and, and I'm making my way, I was all the way back there, I finally get here, I don't always want to let that car in that just trying to get inside. <laughs> or you see that they shutting down that lane, Ooh, you ride that. all the way up to the front <laughs> <laughs> just to cut, just to, just to cut <laughs> on. And no, Eastern <laughs> Avenue was, was backed up forever because it was doing something. It wasn't really doing anything. <laughs> but the trucks, <laughs> all, all of them would go to the, the end of the car. like, you see it from way back there. Oh, <laughs> and here it is. I'm just, yes. I'm oh like, God, I'm <laughs> and you don't want to look at the person right? you know what I'm saying you just like this oh. <laughs> you're not going to get in front of me you know? Ooh, that was a good one right yes. there are days we don't want to do this right but God 
in us is greater than anything against us. The thing is, we are in the influence, right? The influence is there every time. We either accept it or deny it. We either choose it or reject it, right? It's just that simple. But we have what we need. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. But we do have what we need. So, Timothy, again, he was a devout Christian with both Jewish and Gentile roots. He learned about Christ from his mother Lois and his grandmother Eunice, and he had a good reputation among the believers in Lystra and Iconium, which made him a perfect candidate in Paul's mind for ministry. Right? They, they, they saw Timothy as a, a good young leader who loved the Lord. Right? So you could see, right, this, this is an image of that, that continuing in what you've learned and what you are uh, confident of or assured of. This is sort of that trajectory, that, that natural growth that will occur if you continue in the, the, what you have learned and what you know, right? But if you deviate from that, you might end up at this level. Stuck here. That's what they call arrested development. Because you changed up the course, or you changed up the, 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 the plan. You, you started taking something else. You started ingesting something that was not beneficial to your health. And so it created this stoppage in your growth and development. God wants you here, but you're here. And the world says it's okay for you to stay right there. When God says, no, I want you here. And so there's this, this reorientation that, that, that sometimes needs to take place, right? Sometimes we have to evict, we have to get rid of, right? When springtime comes, we, we do spring clean, right? We, we start to empty out those uh, closets and, and, and some of that old stuff that, that doesn't fit. My wife and I were laughing. We saw this shirt that Kylie was wearing that apparently has gone through all of our <laughs> other supergirls, starting off with Kayla. Right? So that thing has to be at least like, I don't know, 15 years old. But it's time to get rid of it. Right? And there's some things that you just have to get rid of. You want to hold on to it, but it's time to let it go and discard it because it's no longer of use to you. It's no longer valuable, right, in your process. God's growing us up. God is stretching us. God is, right, from even, even getting to that point, it's tough. Because the seed has to unsheath itself and then burst through the soil. And so it's not always soft soil. It's not always going to be easy when you break through. But when you break through, people can now see, oh, they're a little different. Mm -hmm. Right? They can see it. And oftentimes they make mention of it. Oftentimes people say, man, there's something different about you. I just, I don't, I don't know, you know, did you, did you change your hair? You, you guys, you know. What is it about you? And, and, and you simply say it's the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's God. I, it ain't me. Because I know if it was, if it, if it, if it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't God, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. You'd be saying something mm -hmm. totally different. So, protecting his word, guarding his witness, right? Good reputation, devout Christian. He knew he knew what he knew. I, I know that's kind of redundant, but <laughs> he did. Paul is emphasizing, hey man, you know what you know. You know what you learned. So hold fast to it and don't forget. It. Right? In this, in this realm, in this moment, in this time, because I'm on my way out. Right? At some point, it at some point, Paul is is headed to to, to be in with, with the Lord in glory. And he wants his son in the ministry to remember, right? Because he's like, I ain't going to always be here to hold your hand. I'm not always going to be here to remind you of those things. So if you do that stuff now, it becomes habit. So when you're challenged, when it comes, right, you'll be ready. Think about it. When Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples were, well, not the end of three, or, or you know, Peter, James, and John, but the others, they were down uh, at, at the foot of the mountain valley. When the man brought his son to be healed, right, they couldn't do it. They weren't ready. They weren't prepared. And Jesus comes down and, and does it and says, man, y'all, this thing comes out by prayer and fasting. But it's not in that moment. It's something that you would have 
been doing and right you would have built that up right you just don't go to the to the gym ain't been there in two years and go to the bench press and put you know 50 pounds you know 100 pounds on there and think you about to <laughs> press that thing up you will be you will be sorely mistaken you'll probably hurt <laughs> trying to get that thing up but if you get in the gym and you start working little by little by little by little, eventually that 100 pounds becomes something you can handle. Mm -hmm. And so that's what he's saying. Keep doing. Keep, keep doing what you have been doing so that when the weight gets super heavy, you'll be able to push against it because you have already done all that training. Make sense? Yes. yes. So, again, we're talking about contrast. Now, this is the Oxford Dictionary definition of contrast. Uh, as a noun, it says the state of being strikingly different from something else in juxtaposition or close association. So, an example is the day began cold and blustery. In, con uh, excuse me, in contrast, almost two weeks of sunshine. So, you obviously see this difference. And one side is cold and blustery, and the other side is sunshine. The other is a uh, contrast between rural and urban trends, right? Rural versus urban. You get it. Difference would be another word. Dissimilarity, disparity, dissimilitude, distinction. So when I am preaching and y'all be like, oh, he, that's what happens right there. <laughs> Just grab all of that one time and try to fit it together. <laughs> but I picked up what lifted off the page for me was distinction. Each one of you, come on. <laughs> if you're comfortable. <laughs> Each one of you, I'll use it as an example, are distinct, right? So, Sister Blandon is in contrast to the entire. <laughs> no, 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 thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> one thing is not like the other. And that's good, right? But that's exactly that's exactly what we do as believers, right? When presented with an opportunity to do something different than the word of God, you say, no, I'm good. I'm straight. I'm fine right here where I'm at. Now, I'm teasing, obviously, right? She did that. But that is the contrast. That is distinction. She was distinct from the rest of the group. And that's how we as believers ought to be, again, in a, in a society that espouses paganism, but also within the context of Christianity where others move away from the truth, mm -hmm. where they start feeding you things that make you feel good, yeah. where they start feeding your disobedience and making you okay in living in disobedience. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it, you can't, sin is sin. There's no way around that. You can't dress sin up and say it's okay to live in sin, be sinful. That's just not okay. God called us out of sin and called us into his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that we can stand before him as righteous is because of what Christ did. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, again, that does not mean that we won't be subject to fall and fail because we are still, in fact, we are still fallible. We are still human beings. Right? But the difference is, is we have the advocate within us that helps us to avoid that stuff when we are walking. Remember we talked about temptation? Remember we talked about how uh, God will give us an opportunity to prove ourselves? So here's moments that we walk in the world where God says, okay, show me that you really love me. Show me that you really believe me. This person hurts you and I've called you to forgive. Now, are you going to forgive or are you going to hold a grudge? This person is supposedly your enemy. But are you going to hate your enemy or are you going to love your enemy? Here, God gives us opportunities to demonstrate right, our faithfulness and commitment to him. He gives us an opportunity to shine. Not for us, but for him. Right? I say it all the time. You're sick of me saying it. Uh, about uh, your good works. Right? Bringing God glory. Let your light so shine before men, others, 
that they would see your good works and give God glory who's in heaven. So the, the working is for him and not for us. Right? We benefit. Don't get me wrong. But it's really about God. So contrast. As a noun. The state of being strikingly different. Distinction. As a verb, it means differ strikingly. Uh, her friend's success contrasted with her own failure. So win against, set off, compliment. Uh, differ strikingly. Again, we as Christians want to differ strikingly uh, from others. Amen? Amen? Any thoughts, any questions, anything bubbling up for you right now? Just happy to be alive, huh? <laughs> you, 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 it seemed like you, you put in, well, you put an emphasis on strikingly um, and my mind just went to, you know, as opposed to subtly. Right, as a the juxtaposition of subtle difference, like you're you're kind of different, but then you know you're you're different in some ways, but then all kind of like the rest in others, and we all have to deal with that. But you know the emphasis on strikingly different, um, you know, s sets us apart, you know, in, in a more uh, distinguished, distinct manner. Absolutely, thank you for picking up on that because you're right. Um, Subtle differences are challenging when viewed from a, a broad lens because you you can run the spectrum and then say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, and then you have this sort of gradient of Christianity, right, from subtle to striking. Mm -hmm. And we all should want to be on the striking side of it, not that we're so holy that we're and no earthly good, right? Not that you know we think we're better than other people, but it's clear to folks. It's clear, even to ourselves, who we are, right? We don't compromise based on uh, circumstances. We don't, you know, change who we are to fit the narrative of uh, our situation or the enemy or whoever. We remain resolute in our commitment to do it God's way. And sometimes that is a striking difference. You mean to tell me you're going to, again, you're going to forgive them after everything they did? You mean to tell me you're going to help this person out and they was just talking bad about you? You mean to tell me, you, 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 don't, you know, these are the differences, right? These are some of the things that separate us, that make people question us. Like, you're, you're nuts. Why would you even do that? You know, that doesn't make any sense. But, it, of course, Paul said it, right? It's foolishness to those who are perishing. Yes. Right? God used the foolish things to, to, to uh, con, uh, oh, con, confound the wise. Thank you. I was searching for it right there. <laughs> right? And, and that's what happens. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that like when the Bible talks about that we are peculiar people? Isn't that kind of what we are? Kind of not yes. The same? Peter said that. Peter was reminded. You're a, you're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Uh, you are different. You are distinct. You are strikingly different. Right? And that is what we are. We are. Cool. I knew you were going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> you always, uh, you know, always think about Sister Terry and, and, and the graphics. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, and we're, and we're kind of moving through the text. So Paul told Timothy that in the last days there would be people that would have a form of godliness, but deny its power. In other words, people would appear on the surface to be followers of Christ, but underneath the surface were rejectors of Christ. These are folks who know the word, but fail to live and abide by the word. They know the Christianese. They know how to speak it. They know how to act like it. But in, in, in really, in behind closed doors, they, 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 don't, they don't use this stuff. Or if they do use it, they use it in conjunction with something else. They, they've created their own sense of theology. Yeah, you know, I got a little bit of Jesus and I got a little bit of Buddha. I got a, I got a little bit of, of Muhammad and, and I got a little bit of Confucius. I got a little bit of Oprah and I got a little bit of Steve Harvey. I got, I, I got you know, all of, I got whoever makes sense, right? All of that stuff. These are 
people who pretend to support and encourage you, but in reality are using you to serve their own purpose. Mm -hmm. They are predators seeking to devour the weak, vulnerable, and ignorant. And for us, we should continue to be steadfast in the truth and to help others either know the truth and or reinforce the truth. So we help people to who don't know the truth to first know it, and then we help people who know the truth reinforce the truth so that they'll know slip away. So here's the kind of people he was talking about. They'll be lovers of themselves and money. They'll be boastful and proud. They'll be abusive and disobedient to their parents. They'll be ungrateful, unholy, and unloving. They'll be slanderous. They'll lack self-control. They'll be brutal, treacherous, rash, and conceited. And finally, they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than God. Mm. Now, this list is not exhaustive per se, but it does cover quite a few types of people. And so he says, look out for this, these types of folks and stay away from them. Mm. See, sometimes we like to get close to the fire. Because mm. fire is what? Warm. Right? It makes you feel good, especially on a cold night. But fire is dangerous and can burn you and ultimately can kill you. So he says, don't even entertain these kind of people. Don't even give them your the time of day. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't uh, interact with them on, on, on some level, like in the marketplace. Like, we're not going to encounter these people. But you don't give them platform to, to, to get to your heart and your mind. You don't allow them to feed you trash. Like I said on Sunday, you reject that stuff. That it, it, it don't belong on your plate. No thank, no, you. no, thank you. I'm good. You can keep that. It's too spicy for me. Give me an indigestion or whatever. It's too bland. It ain't even seasoned right. <laughs> whatever. Just get it away from me. And so our responsibility, especially as mature believers, as the ones that have already got you know, some time in with the Lord is to, number one, hold fast to, our, to what we believe is true and then go and help others. Go and help those that don't know the truth to know the truth and then go and help those who fall by the wayside, right, who, who may have, have slipped away or slipped out somehow from the truth to come back to it. And then we build them up with the truth because the word of God is what? Truth. So, Paul reminded Timothy of the impact and the effectiveness of the Word of God. So, 2 Timothy the three, 16 and 17. So, we were talking about 14 and 15. Now, we're at 16 and 17. Right? All Scripture is what? God breathed. And it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good of work. I'm going to just say this before I get, you know, get into it. When he said the servant of God, yes, it was directed at Timothy, but it was also directed at those that would read this letter. Mm -hmm. That those that would engage in, in, in conversation with Paul as he was sharing uh, this letter. So, teaching, the King James says doctrine. That's G13, 19. Uh, that word is didaskalia. <coughs> Say it with me, didaskalia. Didaskalia. Yeah. Which means instruction. So, the Bible is useful for instruction, for doctrine. The, the, the information that's necessary for our living is found in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's useful for us to share with others. It is, so, when you get, when you go online, when we went online and, and bought this new TV stand, right, it did not come put together. Right? It was in a box in pieces. 
And inside of the box was what? Guess what? Instructions. Instructions. Right? So there were directions that were given that helped me to construct this properly. And the cool thing about it is, is that they had some extra pieces in there in case, <laughs> in case some stuff was left out. Right? I'm just, that's just me talking about peanut you know, projects and oh my God. I don't know if you've ever had something in you had a screw, you got it all together, there was a screw missing, and you're like, okay, what, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Thank God the Word of God isn't like that, it's got everything there. Yeah. But it is that, it is our instruction manual upon which we build ourselves, we build our lives, we build with each other as a faith community, okay? Didascalia. Didascalia. There you go. Rebuking. In the King James, this is for reproof. Uh, G1650, uh, that word is alejas. 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 What, what are the numbers? Like G1650? So Strong's Concordance. Oh, okay. That's the Greek. So if you see H, that's typically the Old Testament. So if we were in the Old Testament, it would say H. Blah, blah, blah. And that's just how they, you know, have categorized or... Uh, the words. The words, yeah. And their usage. So this is a Greek... This is in the Greek. Um, reproof, which means... Which is alehas, which means conviction. And specifically in this text, conviction of sinfulness. So the Bible is great for convicting of sinfulness. Why? Because... God's spirit is in that word and helps the heart to be convicted of its sinfulness mm -hmm. and desire holiness. Mm -hmm. It's good. So it's okay to look at the word of God and reprove yourself or someone else. Now, caution this is not so you can beat somebody up and say, the Bible says this, and you doing that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, that's not what it's for. Mm -hmm. But it is there to help get, get us right. It's, it's there to, as they say, help us to get all the way together. Right? So it is, it is useful for rebuking. And an example would be when Paul was rebuking uh, that woman who had a, 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 a spirit of divination in her, and he said, I'm sick of you, get out of her, and immediately it was gone, right? Uh, and then they got mad because, like, yo, you screwed up my money. <laughs> right? You messed up my heart. So, Alejas. Alejas. Is this it? <laughs> well, alejas. Aleja. There you go. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, correcting, which in the King James is correction. Um, G eighteen eighty two. Uh, that is apatanaras. I'm not going to make y'all say that because I can barely say it. <laughs> Upon the Naras, which is restoration to an upright or right state, correction, improvement uh, of life and character. So if you, you know how we say, Lord God, uh, help me on every lane inside. Mm -hmm. Right, so if I'm like this, leaning, the correction is to get me back right where I'm supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. There are folks that sometimes are walking in a leaning position. It's cool. Get, well, I don't know. <laughs> they may have been spending most of their lives living in a gangster's paradise, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, gangsters lean. <laughs> but if they 
in the gangster lean, here's the correction. <laughs> 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 to an upright or right state. That's why righteousness can only be found through a relationship with him. Right? We will forever be leaning, not on the everlasting arm, but leaning on the wrong thing apart from him. So the word corrects. The word brings back to this position. Right? It brings us back into right horizontal so that excuse me right vertical so that we can be good horizontal training in righteousness now this is a uh, a compound uh, word if you will or a compound statement so there's both training and then righteousness put it together so training is G3809 which is paideia Paideia, y'all can say that one. Paideia, which is instruction which aims at the increase of virtue. And essentially, the training in righteousness combined together really means just that. Instruction which aims at the increase of virtue. And I'll show you once we continue. So the righteousness part is G1343, which is... Decaya Sune. Decaya Sune. Decaya Sune. That's not Yeah, it is. Decaya Sune. <laughs> Integrity, virtue, purity of life, uprightness, correctness in thinking, feeling, and acting. So again, you put it all together, essentially what you're looking for, right, what the Bible does is it provides instruction, right, doctrine, which aims at the increase in virtue. The virtue of love, the virtue of grace, the virtue of mercy, the virtue of holiness, right? It, it, it helps you to maintain your right standing with God because that's essentially what righteousness is. Not in this particular uh, context, right? This, this text, right? It, this is the meaning of that word. But righteousness in general means right standing with God. Okay? So he's saying that the Bible instructs us where we can aim at increasing in the virtues, right? We should be ever increasing in love and forgiveness and grace and mercy and compassion, right? All of these things that flow from God, that's our goal. Our goal is to become more and more like our Father, right? That as we continue to journey towards heaven, we continue to look more and more and more like him. We resemble him, right? Rather than not looking like him. And so I want to highlight a particular text. This is the, the last part. God has thoroughly equipped and perfect, which means perfectly furnished us for the work he has assigned to us individually and collectively. So every one of us as believers, we have everything we need to accomplish God's will for us as individuals and as a collective body of believers. We're not lacking the things that, that's necessary to do what Paul was instructing Timothy to do, which is to be faithful. None of us are lacking that. None of us are lacking as a matter of fact, uh, somebody get 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. If you have to read it. Look at him, boy, you got it? Yeah. Uh, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through, uh, through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. The... The power of God, the divine power, the, the dunos, has given us everything we need 
for life and godliness, or some versions may say a godly life. God's already supplied everything we need to serve him. He's already given us everything we need to live for him. There's nothing else. And I know there's this idea, and there's, you know, and, I, and I'm not knocking it, right, the idea that we say we want more of God. Well, God has given us all of himself, right? There's, God has given us his son. He's given us Jesus, right? He's given us himself in flesh. And so what more of God do we need, right? We, you know, it, the, the, the idea that we need more of it, no, God wants more of us, right? When we look at the flip side of it, it, we really should be saying, God, I want to give you more of me because there are times and there are seasons where we hold back pieces of us from God for various reasons. But we got to be reminded like Paul, he says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the one who loved me and gave himself for me. Right? Crucified. Right? Means I nailed it to the cross. I left it there. But sometimes, y'all, I know we go back to the cross and get it. I want to be mad. I want to be angry. I want to be jealous. I want to be spiteful. I want to withhold. I, I, you know, all of those things. That's us going back to the cross and, and trying to, you know, take it down for ourselves. Leave it up there. Leave it on the cross. Be transformed. Be different. Be distinct. Be strikingly different. Right? Rather than subtly different. I like that, man. That's going to work into a sunny somehow. <laughs> like my brother Will said. But that's that's essentially, that, that's, that's how we do it. We remain in contrast. That doesn't mean that we, you know, uh, stick our noses up at others because they don't believe like we believe, or we somehow feel we're better than others because we have Christ and they don't. Matter of fact, Jesus, I think, not I think, I know, was saddened by those who continue to reject him. I mean, can you imagine you created this thing, you love this thing, and its response to you is rejection and hatred. Right? But Jesus still loves them. So just because we've acknowledged and received and accepted God's love in the form of Christ Jesus doesn't mean that we're somehow better than others. It just means that we're in the right position, and now we're able to go out and, and do the work of ministry. We're able to now go after others, right? We're able to, let's go fishing, right? And, and catch some fish and, and bring them back in and then teach them how to fish. So that they can go out and, and, and continue in that cycle. He's given us everything. He's furnished us perfectly for the work he has assigned to us. Uh, in with this, we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Our lives, the story of our lives have already been written. God already did that. We walk it. We walk it out, and sometimes we try to change it. We we may not like we may not like where God takes us, or or sometimes where we take ourselves. Because let's be honest, sometimes we hear God's voice and we ignore it. Sometimes we hear God's voice and, and we're like, not now. I'm busy. You know, this is fun. I ain't trying to stop. <laughs> And then when all the fun turns to pain and sorrow and sadness, mm -hmm. we search for that voice. Uh -huh. The truth is, the voice was always there with us, even when we were thinking we were, you know, having fun. Amen. So thank God for his forgiveness. Thank God for his unconditional love. Thank God for his endless mercy. For the goodness and the mercy that chases us every 
or ch will continue to chase us for the remainder of our days. Mm -hmm. um, bless it, y'all. It's, it's, we have the opportunity to, to, to make a significant impact uh, in this season, in this time that God has given us. We get to choose whether or not we want to fit in or if we want to stand out. If we want to be distinctive and different, um, the choice is ours. I, for one, would like us to, to be that that different one. Not just as individuals, but as a collective. I would like for Hope Church to continue to be what it's always been. A beacon of light in the darkness that sometimes pervades our community. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Yes. Yes. I was thinking earlier when you were talking about the striking difference, being different. Um, is that more like being a being ambassadors of Christ? Is that example put in there kind of somehow? I think it's different I, being different. I I think being an ambassador of Christ um, means the, the the sort of notion is that you are willing to go forth and do, right? And ambassador is a representative. So, yes, are you willing to, one, represent Christ? But more than that, are you willing to represent Christ rightly? You know, that's the key, is to make sure that we're willing to be a right representative of Christ. Because in the text... Again, we didn't talk about it tonight, but Paul described two people who were supposed to, supposed to be representatives of Christ, oh, okay. but they but they weren't rightly representing him. So yes, the, the I guess the linchpin would be to not only be ambassadors but be right ambassadors. And right? Then the be, other the other thing I was thinking about when you uh, kind of close the book now. Um, when you said he equipped us with everything that we need, is that um, kind of like when people start with um, teaching? I keep going away from me. That, you know, you have everything that, through the Holy Spirit, that God wants you to be in seed form. So as you learn and grow. You know what I mean? I hear what you're saying. So, yes. So, like, like, it's it's like to see everything all of the genetic material necessary for growth, development, all of it is contained therein. And all the seed needs to do is go through the process, right? To allow the process to happen, right? That Maybe that, that trust the process line might be valid here, right? <laughs> the seed allows what's in it to help it to do or become what it's supposed to be, right? So a rose bush is going to be a rose bush, right? A, a, an apple tree is going to be an apple tree. All of that material for it to be what it's designed to be is there. And so when we are reborn through the Holy Spirit, all of the genetic, spiritual genetic material necessary for us to become what God designed us to be, wants us to be, it's there. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is tap into it. All we have to do is allow ourselves to be processed. But again, sometimes the process can be painful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we <coughs> shy away from or altogether run from the process. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't take away the fact that everything it's you that, need is yeah, still like there. Mm -hmm. It's just are you willing to, again, go through, yeah. right? The oil can't get out of the olive without being crushed, mm -hmm. crushing, right? So <coughs> if you want oil, well, you got to crush be crushed, right? If you, you know, and I hear that from people. I want the oil. Well, you got to be willing to be crushed. That's right. You know, not many people are saying, "Choose me, Lord." Hey, Job didn't say, "Choose me, Lord." <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, Paul didn't even know he was going to be chosen, right? Yes. And I wanted to say too, with the process that um, in Jeremiah talks about how um, he tells him to go down and, and check out the potters. It deprives us because we sometimes forget that 
the process is, is not just one time deal. We have to be uh, put back on the on the wheel and yeah. press sometimes in order to to be perfected. Mm -hmm. And and I love the fact that God doesn't um, forget about anything in our life. He uses it all: mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly. The things that we would want to sweep under the rug mm -hmm. and don't want nobody to know about. Sometimes with yeah. those things, you know. Um, I've li lately, I've been having that experience with you have to tell it. You have to tell it because the Holy Spirit and God will, He will, it will rebuke you and it will make you because you see a person in desperation. You see a person where you were at, where God brought you out of, and they have that hurt in their eyes. You can see, you can feel, you know what that person is experiencing, you experiencing, God brought you out of it. Mm -hmm. And I love that about God because He will. He will allow himself to get the glory through your testimony of the worst things you've been through. Well, that's the way God helps you to guard your witness. Yes. Because your story is unique to you, and God continually reminds you through those experiences uh, that it's him, not you. But you also, or I should say, and that gives you opportunity to again share that it was him. Yes, I messed up, but God. Mm -hmm. Yes, I got promoted, but God. Yes, I struggled financially, but God. Yes, all of these things, but it's all oh God. by God. Yes. Uh, I don't know who's right. Okay, Revelation. <laughs> what I love about what you just said is is a point that Pastor was saying about um, God is also equipping us for everything we need to bring others in. And so our witness is helping people to understand how we are now a contrast. We weren't always a contrast to the world because we were just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it's through that witness that we're able to help people to understand that it is not insurmountable for them because we were just as raggedy, as messed up, and there's still things that we're working on. But I think that the fact that we can be transparent and we can share with others, giving our witness and guarding our witness to be able to speak about that, helps people to understand that it's only through the word of God, through the scriptures of God, that empower us to be that contrast. And so I love that point, and I love the fact that, Pastor, when you talked about God equipping us, not for the purpose for us to just be distinctly different from everyone else. That's, it's, it's great. Yeah. But the purpose isn't for us to just be different. Right. The purpose is for us to be able to lead others to be different as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the best sales and marketing approach. <laughs> you know, we've, got the, we've got the best pitch, you know. Honestly, it, it's it's there. It's, it's not hard. Jesus saves. You know, Jesus is the one that, that changes and transforms lives. As a matter of fact, the only conformity that Jesus requires is conformity to his will, his way, using his wisdom. Uh, and we, we contrast everything else, right? We remain in contrast to the world. So, yeah. Sister Evangelist. Um, so as you were talking about Timothy mm -hmm. and the uh, gods, you know, um, I was just thinking to myself that, um, as you mentioned, that there were many gods and they worshipped the Greek, they worshipped many gods, um, but yet he had the word in him, as you mentioned, his mother and his grandmother. Um, but even for ourselves, you know, as we go out into this world, that that word, the word, as you said, is what covers us as we come against these spirits because they are out there they you know uh, but yet Timothy you know was strong in his faith and he was able to but there are many gods and yeah and he, but even 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 you know because you're in school uh -huh. and and I know they're teaching you about it even within Christendom there are those that have taken Christ and I sort of, again, like mishandle them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, heresies, mm -hmm. adoptionism, right? Which, which suggests that Christ was adopted by God. 
Like, he's not the Christ, but he became Christ when the Spirit uh, ascended on him. And then at the, res at the crucifixion, the Spirit removed himself from him. And the man Jesus died, but the, but the God Jesus did not. But that's, that, that's, that's a thought out there, right? And many others. You, and and, and they're, they're just, there was some, some that were just like, what, Gnosticism, right? We talked about that where, you know, the material world is bad, and, and so you, you, it's only special knowledge, through special knowledge that, that you can, you know, connect with God, and that's only given to a certain amount of people, and that sort of thing. All of these sorts of ways to confuse folks and move them from the truth the simple truth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, right? That he demonstrated that, that it is documented by eyewitnesses recorded in different languages over how many, you, you, you've heard, right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yes. All right. Um, well, that, that, that's, that is Bible study. <laughs> What is today? So today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I needed that help. Uh, I believe we have our marriage ministry, uh, evening of love, that's happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. here. Yes. Okay, 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Saturday, we are having our leadership meeting, so all leaders be here at 10 a.m. We'll, we'll be up in the office. Uh, and then Sunday, God willing, we'll be back in service. Uh, for another opportunity to worship our God. Uh, oh, wear your jerseys if you want, because it's Super Bowl Sunday. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to come with my Peyton jersey on, my Walter Peyton jersey. We'll allow, we'll allow uh, Dallas. <laughs> we will be, we will be uh, in, in Powerful Men uh, at 8.30 up in the office, yes. Yes. No, Wednesday is Wednesday. Wednesday is Valentine's Day. It's Ash Wednesday. But that Thursday, I will, when we come to Bible study, I will do the teaching about uh, Lent. And then that following Wednesday, the 21st, will be our first Lenten service. We're going to have three. So, not a deviation, but, but just kind of like a instruction and what that really means because again the thing for this month has been preservation right and so Lent is a way of, pres of preserving oneself by giving up we preserve ourselves y'all are here I'll, I'll just come all you here tonight come back next Thursday night <laughs> alright amen amen all hearts and minds are clear. We'll uh, stand so we can pray and be dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> that you've given us once again to gather here in your name. God, so we may worship you so that we can study your holy word together. We pray, God, that we would uh, not be afraid to live in contrast. That, God, we would not be afraid to differ strikingly. God, we pray that we wouldn't just accept a subtle difference. But, God, we would be so different that others would ask us about you. Help us, Father, to not be afraid or ashamed to stand out and to stand up. Help us, Father, when we fail and falter. Forgive us, God. Bring us back to right relationship with you. Give us the right words to say, Father, when we stumble. And, Father, help us to keep our mouths closed when we are to be silent. 
Father, we pray for our sick and infirm. We ask, oh God, that you would touch their bodies, that you would speak to their hearts and their minds. God, whatever the concern or care of these that have gathered or those that have are, are online, God, I pray that you would meet each and every one of them. Father, I pray that as we depart this place, we know by your divine permission and authority. Thank you, Father, for all of the activities that are before us. We pray, Father, that you would be in the midst and that you would bless. Father, that you would get the glory, honor, and the praise because you and you alone are worthy of it. God, we love you. God, we thank you. It's in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, who is truly and certainly the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.